when Catherine is an incredibly strong athlete who takes charge of her life and often urges other women to do the same. She doesn't sit back and hope that things will be done for her, instead she tackles life head on. She takes the initiative to dominate the world of athletics, just as her Kenyan male counterparts have done previously. And she has succeeded. The golf course at Brobalster near Stockholm, Sweden has a pretty impressive patron and the members can't stop talking about her. Annika Sorenstam is blonde and blue-eyed, extremely talented and willing to mix it with the boys. Coming from a sporting family, Annika made her golfing debut in 1982. Between herself, her sister Charlotte and her mother Ganilla, they have made many tournaments their own. Annika has an amazing talent. In 1995, at the age of 25, she had her first LPGA career victory when she became a Rolex first-time winner at the US Women's Open. She also won an Athlete of the Year in Sweden, the country's most prestigious sports award. With her name constantly on the leaderboards, it wasn't long before the world started to notice the long-hitting Swede. With a reputation as having nerves of steel, she continued to impress, defending her title at the 1996 US Women's Open. That same year, she surpassed the million dollar mark in career earnings. Annika is now a household name and a role model for young girls throughout the world. Merchandise for the star golfer is big business and much in demand. But that comes with winning. 1999 saw LPGA history when she fired an 11 under during the first round of the Sara Lee Classic, as well as her first career hole in one. As for prize money, her career earnings skyrocketed, crossing the $4 million mark. In the first five years of her career, Annika won more LPGA tournaments than any other tour player. There was no keeping Annika down. In 2001, she recorded eight wins, six second places, and a total of 20 top 10 finishes. She was awarded her fourth career Rolex Player of the Year award, and also set new records in earnings, crossing the $2 million mark in a single season. In the Lincoln Financial Group battle at Bighorn, Annika teamed with Tiger Woods to defeat Kari Webb and David Juval, marking the LPGA's first ever appearance on US primetime television. Going where others have feared to tread, Annika accepted in 2003 an invitation to play in the Colonial at Fort Worth, Texas, becoming the first woman in 58 years to compete in a PGA Tour event. The last female to play in a PGA event was the legendary Babe Zaharias at the 1945 Los Angeles Open. While her entry had brought criticism from some male players, she had an on-course female fan club, many sporting Go Anna badges. So whether she's breaking records or hitting off with the men, no one can deny the super talent of Annika Sorenstam. Smart, tough and talented British athlete Paula Radcliffe has plenty going for her. She is articulate and outspoken and just happens to be a damn good runner, making her the queen of British track and field. With a first-class honours degree in European studies and fluency in French and German, Paula is both smart in her lobbying techniques and brave enough to take on the might of athletics officialdom. Not scared to make her views known, Paula came to international prominence when she sat in the stands at the Edmonton World Championships, holding up a sign saying EPO cheats out. She was protesting over the inclusion of an athlete who had escaped a two-year ban for testing positive to a banned drug. The talented runner has also inherited some handy genes, as she is the great-niece of Charlotte Radcliffe, a 1920 Olympic silver medalist in swimming, and the daughter of marathon runner Peter Radcliffe. With ambitions in sport politics, particularly in furthering the cause of women in sport, an International Olympic Committee membership is not out of the question. Known as having the style of a nodding donkey, Paula looks like she is in pain, and probably is. Her eyes roll back and her head jerks as she appears to fight for breath, but looks can be deceiving. Paula, Britain's World Women's Marathon record holder, is as tough as they come. The winner of a BBC Sports Personality of the Year, Paula is inundated with offers to run in marathons, but the London Marathon is her pet favourite. She claims the internationally acclaimed event is the most important competition on her calendar. After winning and smashing the women's record in 2002 in London, she went on to become the fastest female marathon runner of all time in Chicago, finishing more than two minutes under world record time. 
With long-distance Olympic gold medals in her sights, Paula is keeping fit and healthy. But things could have been worse when she was lucky to escape serious injury when a little girl on a bicycle ran into the world champion while she was on a training run in New Mexico. Despite grazing her knees and back, Paula's rigorous training regime continued. While the London Marathon is a prestigious title, attracting the world's best athletes, thousands of amateurs also take part, many raising money for charities on the way. And Paula gets in and does her bit too, raising awareness and cash for charities, helping the homeless and asthma sufferers. She says marathon running is a fun way for everyone to achieve a physical and mental goal. Paula won the 2003 London Marathon in style. In an astonishing 2 hours, 15 minutes, 25 seconds, she broke her own world record by a massive 1 minute, 53 seconds. With the event allowing male Kenyan pacemakers, Paula was able to use her strength and stamina to excel. Style or no style, Paula has what it takes to be the best in the world. Kathy Freeman won the hearts of a nation when she won gold at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. With the pressure of her country's expectations felt, the girl from a small town in Australia ran her heart out and realised a lifelong dream. Last night, big night, big night, um, amazing. One of the happiest moments of, of my life, actually, of my life, because I, my family was so happy. My husband was in tears, my mother, my brothers, my nephew. Um, who were there, who were there in the, in the stadium. And I, I kind of sense that I made a lot of people happy, so that made me feel really good. <laughs> it had always been a goal for Kathy Freeman to run in an Olympic Games, and in 1996 she realised that dream, becoming the first Aboriginal athlete to represent Australia. At the Atlanta Games, she became the sixth fastest woman ever over 400 metres, running a Commonwealth record and winning the silver medal behind Mari Jose Perec in arguably the greatest one lap race of all time. But it was many years ago when Kathy first discovered her love of running, competing in her first race at the tender age of six. In her youth, she would run 12 laps barefoot around a grassy track on a regular basis. Her mother would encourage her to write out, I am the world's greatest athlete, an affirmation which was to ring true some years later. When she was 13, she told her school guidance counsellor that her vocational plan was to win Olympic gold, a plan that was to see fruition down the track. When Cathy turned 16, she was selected to run at the Commonwealth Games, winning a gold medal as part of the 4x100 metre relay team. That win only fueled the desire to strive harder towards the ultimate goal, the elusive gold medal in an Olympic Games. When the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games finally came around, Cathy was ready to realise that goal. At the opening ceremony, Cathy was the star attraction, lighting the flame in spectacular circumstances. And what followed was everything she had ever dreamed of. With over 100,000 people chanting her name and running in a specially designed one-piece suit, Kathy flew home to win gold in the 400 metres final. The most famous Indigenous face in Australia and well-loved on and off the track, Kathy made the Sydney Olympics her own. Kathy also shined outside of athletics, receiving an honorary doctorate from the University of Ballarat. Kathy, draped in academic garb, looked a bit uncomfortable away from her familiar surroundings, but was proud of her success. She was presented with a doctorate from the university during the ceremony, with officials praising Kathy's determination and willingness to tackle challenges and her remarkable achievements. Kathy has given plenty back to the community, especially programs involving Indigenous children. Along with other sporting stars like Australian swimmer Dawn Fraser and former US Olympic hurdles champion Ed Moses, Kathy has given the children a goal in life. She knew that if the programs had been around when she was younger, it would have helped to define her direction in life earlier and her vision would have been so much clearer. Kathy, who was extremely proud of her heritage, ran her victory lap at the Commonwealth Games with the Aboriginal flag before taking the Australian flag as well. Even though it ignited much discussion, she raised awareness regarding Aboriginal and race relations. And it was those actions that made Cathy a role model for young and old, having been awarded the title of Young Australian of the Year and the following year Aboriginal Athlete of the Year. It had been many years since Australia had their very own track star and after Sydney they had found their new hero in Cathy Freeman. A down-to-earth person and a fierce competitor, Cathy has been a genuine star.